Hey there, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my experience with Half-Life, a game that needs no introduction. I actually streamed this game and the VODs are watchable in my new Discord server. For this video, those streams exist as gameplay footage for me to use in addition to my low effort drawings. But that's besides the point. I'll be covering three major things that stuck out to me while playing this game, which are the storyline, the combat mechanics, and some of the other gameplay elements. But Diamond, can you talk about why the graphics are so bad? Well, there really isn't much to say about that. Anyway, I'm going to stop incoherently rambling so that I can incoherently ramble some more. Let's go. Half-Life's storyline is pretty good, but not what I'd call the best in gaming. To give a quick summary without spoiling anything, you're a theoretical physicist named Gordon Freeman who works at Black Mesa. You arrive a bit late to work, but, you know... It's not a big deal, at least you don't work for Amazon. Anyway, your day starts with you running a sample of a strange material through an equally strange looking machine. Everything's fine, right? Well, yes, until it's not. At that point, the machine explodes. Bodies fill the halls. Black Mesa is in ruins. It's a resonance cascade. Said cascade brings aliens into the facility, as well as marine soldiers trying to cover up the whole incident. You, as Gordon Freeman, must get out of Black Mesa alive and find out why these bloodthirsty Vortigaunts and headcrabs are here. That's about all I can give you without spoiling anything major. It's a bit shallow, but still very attention-grabbing. However, it presents itself in the most creative way possible. There are no cutscenes or dialogue boxes. There are in-game events that occur to give you the storyline, however. The game ends on a cliffhanger, which can be frustrating, but I personally like this because you still get the sense that you accomplished something just before that. If Stranger Things were a video game, I think Half-Life would be pretty similar to it. Oh wait, jokes aside, Half-Life's story isn't anything groundbreaking, but you can tell that there was some serious thought put into it. Sadly, I still don't know who ate all the donuts. I didn't realize this on my first playthrough, but this is what Half-Life is all about. And it's also what got me playing a second time. The enemies are legitimately hard to fight, and even by today's standards, their AI is amazing. Obviously, it does have some shortcomings, but even still, the enemies feel legitimately difficult to go up against, and I found this was the case even on the easiest difficulty. Well, Diamond, you must be bad at the game then. I mean, you're not wrong, but the enemies still aren't easy to fight against. And it was my first playthrough, so give me a break. You'll find yourself dying a lot if you try to go in guns blazing. The best thing to do instead is to be overly paranoid. Check corners, make sure the enemy can't see you, and come up with a plan for each encounter. You really need to get into a different mindset to play this game well. Leadhead made a video explaining this super well, which I will link in the description. But basically, in Half-Life, you have to plan ahead first, and then let the violence begin. It's not an outdated or even bad design choice, but it's very different from what most of us are used to. I found myself really liking this approach, but there's one major problem. Half-Life doesn't do a good job of making this clear to the player. It tries to use subtle game design choices to cue the player in, but I found myself not really picking up on them. I've also found that when watching some other novices play Half-Life that they don't pick up on them either. <coughs> Liam Triforce. In my opinion, it's a shame that there aren't more mainstream games encouraging people to play methodically. Of course, there are quite a few realistic shooters, but I feel like Half-Life wanted to be more like a sci-fi tactical shooter. Perhaps if it weren't for the ability to quick save, I think people would pick up on this a lot more easily. In fact, when I tried approaching Half-Life with more thought put into how I fight things, I found myself barely needing to quick save at all, whereas on my first playthrough, I was getting into places where I would get completely screwed over because I was on low health and would be forced to go back to an earlier save way more often than I'm proud to admit. If I couldn't quick save, then I'd die a few times, and then I'd probably realize pretty quickly that what I was doing probably wasn't such a good idea. I'd also put the autosave spots closer together so that dying isn't too frustrating. But overall, I'd say the game's approach to combat is the main reason that I play it. Aside from killing the marines and beating things with your crowbar, you'll find that you're doing a lot of puzzles in Half-Life as well as platforming. I personally love platforming in video games, but that's because I used to play Mario a lot when I was a kid. Half-Life's slippery controls make it a bit more difficult, but not to the point of being frustrating, at least for me. If I was getting frustrated, it was because I either didn't understand the premise of a certain puzzle, or I couldn't figure out how to kill a certain boss. For that reason, I had to call on the power of the stream chat, or even reference playthroughs sometimes. But doing so is like asking your teachers for help. As long as you're trying on your own, there's no shame in doing it, no matter how stupid you feel. Just don't use Noclip. 
or I will literally kill you. The puzzles have you looping around different areas, which can get a bit monotonous at times, which is another reason why I prefer the platforming, but to me, none of those mechanics felt like an afterthought. The only section I felt was unnecessarily tedious was the chapter titled Interloper, which was essentially just an elevator maze with some wacky enemy placements. In general though, I felt like these mechanics, while they aren't entirely new, were very well implemented. I could tell the combat was definitely the main focus, but none of the things that weren't that felt like they were put in just for the sake of it. So do I recommend Half-Life? Absolutely. Does it hold up? If you don't count the graphics, then yes. However, it's very different from many of the games that we're used to, from the way it handles combat, even down to how it presents its objectives and narrative. It's also a really challenging game to get into. I recommend everyone who watches this video give Half-Life at least a try, and maybe even play it multiple times if possible. I think it's fun to familiarize yourself with the different areas of this game. It's kind of like climbing Mount Everest multiple times and knowing every little bump and crevice that makes it up, minus the risk of falling to your death. I feel like Half-Life's gameplay gives it a level of nuance that most other games don't have, including Half-Life 2, and that is something I can truly appreciate. Also, you just can't go wrong with the scientist screams. STOP! No. However, something I should mention is the fact that when you load new areas, your game freezes for a few seconds, and sometimes you might get stuck in one spot after you pass a loading zone. But overall, this game is super polished for something made 20 years ago. I'll admit though, I'm really glad modern games are able to do away with this. I absolutely would recommend plunking down the $10 for this game, unless you're still trying to afford ramen. With that being said, I'm gonna go buy that one scientist some more donuts. Have a good one, everybody.